It's Tuesday and we are a week into the lockdown by now. And Monday was perhaps one of the worst days that we've had in terms of the number of new cases, more than 200 new cases, and a particular hotspot being located around the Nizamuddin area of Delhi, where a Tablighi Jamaat uh, gathering was held. And there was a lot of spread from there. So 10 deaths yesterday, essentially linked to that one particular event. But if you look at the overall map uh, of India and how the spread is happening, it has to be said that by and large, the curve is relatively flat. If you look at other countries who were 15 days or 17 days after the 100th case, the number of cases that we have in India right now are not growing as fast as we've seen in some of the other countries. And that's after that spike that we saw yesterday. Some reason for hope. Now those are of course number of cases. So people could say that perhaps the cases are being suppressed a little bit because we're not testing enough. Yes, that's a possibility. But this is another graphic that is worth looking at. This is looking at India in comparison with other countries in terms of deaths. And yes, there are a certain number of deaths that have taken place, but again, not growing at the same rate as we've seen, for example, in China or Italy or Iran or the US or many other countries at this particular level. The religious gathering at Delhi's Nizamuddin is turning out to be a massive cluster crisis for the spread of COVID-19. Apart from 24 people in Delhi, 10 in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, and six men in Telangana have tested positive for the novel coronavirus after participating in the event. The Andhra Pradesh government has confirmed that at least 369 people from Andhra Pradesh had also attended the gathering. Some reports suggest massive surveillance and testing will take place at the Nizamuddin coronavirus cluster. The maximum number of foreign nationals who were part of the event that took place between March 15th and March 17th are from Indonesia. Apart from that, there were 19 Nepalese nationals, 20 people from Malaysia, 33 from Myanmar, 28 people from Kyrgyzstan, 71 from Thailand, 34 from Sri Lanka and 19 Bangladeshi nationals among others. Nearly half of the people who participated in the Tablighi Jamaat congregation in Delhi's Nizamuddin came from two states, Tamil Nadu and Assam. Giving state-wise breakup of the number of people present at the congregation held earlier this month, officials said that 510 people come from Tamil Nadu, while 281 were from Assam. Officials said that about 1,800 people attended the annual congregation. The Jamaat's headquarters in Nizamuddin area has emerged as one of the biggest coronavirus disease hotspots in India, with 24 people testing positive and nearly 200 others showing symptoms of COVID-19. As the authorities locate the persons from Andhra Pradesh and Telangana who had attended the Tablighi Jamaat conference at Nizamuddin in Delhi, the AP government has managed to find 369 people from the state, with most of the COVID-19 affected persons in Andhra turning out to be participants or contacts of a participant of the congregation held between March 15th to the 17th. The government has intensified efforts to quarantine them on a war footing. As per the district-wise breakup of people who attended the meet, the highest number was from Kurnool with 107, followed by Krishna with 40, Guntur with 37. Nellore 33 and Prakasam 30. Stating that panic will destroy more lives than coronavirus, the Supreme Court on Tuesday favoured criminal action against those spreading misinformation and fake news on the pandemic. A bench of Chief Justice S.A. Bobre and Justice El Nageshwar Rao in the hearing conducted through video conferencing emphasised that fake news creates panic among people, thus requiring the centre to have an official channel of directly communicating with the people. The court pointed out that the government's affidavit about steps being taken to ameliorate the situation has nothing on the aspect of counselling to people, including the migrant workers who are lodged in shelter homes and other temporary accommodations. As the coronavirus pandemic affects the economy, the Maharashtra government has said that there would be a 60% cut in the month's salaries of public representatives in the state, including the chief minister. The salaries of Class 1 and Class 2 employees will be cut by 50%, while that of Class 3 employees will be cut by 25%. There will be no cut in the salaries of remaining classes in the state bureaucracy. The Telangana government has also decided to impose big salary cuts. State Chief Minister KCR is taking a 75% salary cut along with his cabinet, MLCs, MLAs, state corporation chairpersons and local bodies' representatives. The World Health Organization warned on Tuesday that while global attention has shifted to epicenters in Western Europe and North America, the COVID-19 epidemic is far from over in Asia and the Pacific urging governments of all levels in the region to stay engaged in efforts to combat the virus 
WHO Regional Director for the Western Pacific, Dr. Takeshi Kasai, said it's going to be a long-term battle. The epidemic is far from over in Asia and the Pacific. This is going to be a long-term battle, and we cannot let down our guard. We the world economy will go into recession this year with a predicted loss of trillions of dollars of global income due to the coronavirus pandemic. This indicates serious trouble for developing countries with the likely exception of India and China, according to a latest UN trade report. The UN said that in recent days, advanced economies and China have put together massive government packages. This represents an unprecedented response to an unprecedented crisis, which will reduce the extent of the shock physically, economically and psychologically, the report said. The COVID-19 pandemic has thrown the Board of Control for Cricket in India off balance and the cricket body is thinking of having a cash-rich Indian Premier League in October-November. According to reports, the decision largely depends on the postponement of the Men's World T20, which is scheduled to be held in Australia at the same time. Currently, Australia has sealed its borders for six months to contain the spread of COVID-19. Interestingly, ICC has not dropped any hint regarding the postponement of the World T20 yet, but officials in the BCCI will surely be waiting for an opportunity to put together the IPL in that window.